Steam Job Proxy. And this is a part of my Itch Eye Odyssey. A game that goes by the name of Fugue in the Void. By Moshe Link? Mosh Link? As you can possibly already tell. Was it by Creative Chaos? I don't know. But as you can possibly already tell, this is a story of my mind. This is going to be... This is my mind. An artistic endeavour. By the name of Fugue in Void. Just said, I said that already, didn't I? Uh, so I'm going to try and experience this, right? Because me talking on top possibly undermines what, what it's going for. So, uh... Also, I, I I took a little bit of preview, and uh, I should I should have probably just done my instruction on this screen because I feel like there's time. There's time on this screen. We have time for me to explain what's going on. I'm having an itch eye odyssey. What is that? Well, a few months back, itch.io website that sells games. Uh, released a bundle, uh, kind of a, a racial justice bundle, because there were riots. I don't know if you remember that, and I think the money goes towards. I, th I think I knew at the time, um, the like of the Bell Project, basically, uh, and there's like a five hundred odd games. I don't remember how many games. A, a lot of games, hundreds and hundreds of games were put into that bundle. It was five dollars, and I decided I'm going to try and play them all. I'm going to try and play all the games. I don't know if this counts as a game, but it's in the bundle. I paid like five dollars, it's basically nothing. Like I can't complain, like even if they're all rubbish, like five dollars, like I can spare five dollars. I assume it's a train, because I could hear trains earlier. But we're in also the story of a mind. So it's a mind train. It's a slow zoom, that's what we're doing, to something. What does the slow zoom mean? It's a slow realisation of a thought. I'm still not sure what this is. I, was, I, I, I figured as soon, when we were this close I'd know. But I'll be going to be zooming the entire way. I've not touched the control yet. I don't know if I can move anything. I've turned the controller on. Oh, it's just lines. It's lines. The various different colours of grey. Tones of grey. Shades of grey. Light. Can we do? Can we do something? Take a sip of tea. Pikmin Four. What is it? Is it an umbrella? No, <laughs> it was facing the. It was going inwards, not outwards. Zooming. Ever uh, again, I'm completely undermining the tone of what this is going for. Looks like a black hole. I was going to do the the. Uh, Doctor Who theme. Let's not do the Doctor Who theme. Or Stargate. Or Spaceballs. We're going at ludicrous speed. Yeah, I think I'll put the controller down. I don't think... I, se I sense the, the input is non-existent. I shall just... Star Trek. Uh, but not just Star Trek, Star Trek, I mean, the film, I forgot what it's called, the one with are in. Ooh. We've stopped zooming forwards, we're now seeing a tower uh, grow out of nothing. We're either rising with the tower, that doesn't look like we're rising. It looks like it's growing little squares and shoving the squares downwards and they... The squares grow as they go lower. I don't know if the pattern repeats. It's ever so slightly random. 
We might be very slowly approaching the tower. Yeah, aren't we? Hmm. So uh, I get simu simulation sickness. So certain first-person games just make me feel very ill to play. And there's the worry with this. It's the worry, like with these. Uh, it's not the first art game that's made me feel ill. I'm. I don't know if I do yet or not, but I sense that might be a possibility. You know, like wearing VR, it helps if you have a sort of um, a firm, still thing that you can. It's what it's why sometimes they they reduce the field of view so you can view the other stuff around and get your bearings, as it were. Should I be trying to interpret this? Because this is the most thing-like thing thing I've seen so far. I'm like, oh, this is a like a desert with poles in. Like that's a thing I can identify. The desert of the mind. They look like telephone poles. But what's in the desert? Ball. A flower. Oh, it's somebody going into a ball. Hmm. So this sort of imagery, you know what it does really well? Because the problem with this sort of stuff is just nobody has the patience to watch it. It, like, it might be really good, but generally speaking, people don't have the patience to sit for 45 minutes. Uh, which I think this is. I'm going to have to walk away. I can't pause this. I don't think there's a pause button. Uh, get my asthma pump, uh, which should be nearby, but it isn't. Now I'm, I'm looking at a muddy wall, or is it bronze? It might be a bronze wall with all that shine on it. But where this imagery works really well is... Juxtaposed with something very familiar. So you're playing a computer game, you defeat a boss, what's like a river, and then you, you touch a stone, and suddenly it flashes white, and the character sees this imagery. And then suddenly you're like, what does that mean? People will engage with that. Like, there's, the game control is quite good at that, because everything... It may not even have reasons for existing, but it drips with meaning. And this drips with meaning, right? It means something about his mind. He said it. He said it at the start. But that's there's not quite enough for me to grab right now. Because I don't know who he is. So cool, it's an insight to your mind, but... I don't know who you are. I, I might need to know a little bit about you. Okay, I'm assuming this is the same object, but we're slightly further away now. It's a, like a disco ball. I mean, what we're in is a gallery, right? I'm looking at some dude's gallery. But galleries... I mean, it's been a while since I've been to one. Not really a big gallery goer. The galleries have little plaques next to the works. It tells you who made them. Sometimes it tells you what they're about. Sometimes what they're about is the part of the art, right? I get that. Water. I know what water is. There's a wall under the water. Uh, cool. Oh, it's a ladder. What could it mean? <laughs> You see what I mean? We're, we're walking through a gallery now, and there's a piece there, there's a piece there, there's a piece there. So we're now on the ladder, I get that. Can I... Can I... No, I don't have control. Oh, uh... oh I, I, god damn, I actually am in control. Well, now I'm going to have to... I always had control. 
jump and everything. Or this. Okay, I legitimately don't, like, I'm pressing... Uh, I think I am walking forwards, but I couldn't tell. There's no information on the white. There's no information walking towards me, apart from the little tiny bits of the court sides there. I'm walking forwards. Okay. So, my controller, I think, legitimately just ran out of batteries then. But it's stuck in forward mode, I think. At the very least, I have more batteries really close by. Oh look, we're actually approaching a wall! <laughs> it's very exciting. Use this opportunity to put the batteries in the controller. I mean, I don't want to turn it on because it will stop. Let's see if I can get my. That's yeah, right there. Oh, we got it. Like, uh, Stanley Parable sort of did a bit of this, where it presented its gameplay with a fake Let's Player. Just for one of the adverts. Oh, I can turn around and everything. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, clearly it wasn't made for controller. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll play on controller instead. Can I run? I can! I can run! Sorry! Okay, so we took a little bit of extra time that we didn't need to take. So that intro put the Half-Life train right into shame, didn't it? Oh, it's pipes. Again, at least I can sort of identify something is afoot. There's a hidden loading screen. I can tell when there's a hidden loading screen. Just. We are going to run. Why would you put a walk and a run in a game like this? I don't actually know. Gameplay. By the way, this is, this is all very pretty. And I... I, uh, I kind of wish it was in service to a game. As much as I like art pieces, I like games more. Saying that, I liked several walking simulators, but even them have a certain amount of interact. There was interactivity right there. You clicked on a button, John. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, that is. Not sure what's happened. Let's go again. Hmm. I chose poorly.
Right, I've stopped talking. Well, I'm, I'm walking down corridors. Let's hope that's open up a door or something. Hmm. Let's walk all the way back. Let's not walk all the way back. We cannot fall. Hmm. Oh, now we can fall. Why do we fall, Master Boost? Uh, cause... What? Right, we've solved the puzzle. What does it mean? Why that texture? I just walk towards the light. So right now, all I'm thinking is, well, it's it's kind of pretty. Uh, I guess this is, you know, a puzzle in navigation. Why are there, there are two conflicting lights? It created a maze. Just that, this little climbing flame. I hope there's a. Okay, I think I might have trapped myself in here. Ah! I've broken your game, I'm not starting it again. If I can't get out, I'm. Not doing this entire 16 minutes again. <laughs> oh, I really want to. Like, give. Be. Hang on, we'll try. We will try. But. You've made a game with no options. I don't know if there's a continue button. Why did I approach the climbing frame? What does it mean to be stuck in a climbing frame? What's it trying to tell me right now? It didn't even tell me the buttons. I hate to say it. But they've just made it impossible to continue. I'm not doing that 20 minutes again. It's a 45 minute experience and I've just experienced half of it. I, I'll see if I can quit out and come back in. We'll see what. So, yeah, I left the game, I'll come back in. We're back at the start. And yeah, I could sit through 20 minutes and do this again and catch us up and not trap myself in a climbing frame. But I'm not going to do that. 
my time is slightly more valuable than that. We're going to jump to the impressions. And we're going to see what the next game is. But I'll tell you one this in advance, and I'll probably say it again. I've played, in, in this Itchai Odyssey, another, what I'd consider a, a gallery game. Where it's these pieces, I'm looking at them. And there's meaning dripping, yes? And it had a menu. <laughs> it didn't break on me. There was actually more interactivity than walking around as well. Uh, so, it's... Um, it needs to have basic functionality. A museum... Like... I need to be able to get into the physical museum. Like... like you could say, oh, breaking into the museum is part of the piece. Yeah. yeah. Kind of looks pretty. What do you suppose this means? Let's we'll keep the music on. Let's see what else. Oh, oh yeah, we'll cut to the impressions, won't we? Right. Well, this picture is going to be pretty easy to draw. Um. I just need to do a brutalist design. Alright. Uh, what did I think of this game? I I forgot what it's called. Something in fugue, isn't it? No, I'm just... I know. I need to give the name. What's it? And those are my impressions. No, okay. <laughs> I thought the actual visuals were really nice. I know the point is it's a sort of brutalist look for a landscape. I said during the video it was a gallery, right? Here's a cool thing, here's a cool thing, here's a cool thing, it's all, here's a cool thing. It's all dripping with meaning, but I don't have anything to attach that meaning to. A gallery has context. It's in a building for a start. You put paintings near other paintings. Uh, so if it's from a period, you put them near a period. And their context is each other as well, right? But like, paintings generally have people in or buildings, recognisable things. And when they're abstract, even abstract paintings have rules to them, right? Jackson Pollock isn't random. I, I, the game broke because you're 20 minutes in and they were like, yeah, you've got to play it once 45 minutes. So, well, that, I'd be forced to play that first 20 minutes again. And now that's already against the rules. But, like, I never finished this and I really wanted to. I would have done the whole 45 minutes. Ah. Uh, the problem is I'm going to look... There are two other massive art games, right? This is art game I'm playing right now, to be honest. Which I really enjoy. But I'm gonna... This is a little silly, right? It's supposed to be a little silly. So... Whereas the other one takes itself a lot serious. The, uh... The other game that was a gallery, and I mentioned this in the video, had menus. Like, it could make the point it was making and not make it impossible for me to play it like that didn't distract from hey let's have a really close intense look at these lamps let's have a really close intense look at these cars that also had gameplay in it like the gameplay was click on a thing but that was more of a walking but I'm happy with walking if that's what you want to do if you want me to literally walk around your thing that's fine but like it broke 
it broke. I, I, that's unforgivable, I'm afraid. Um, like, I'm never going to go back and play it now. And that's that's what makes it unforgivable, because I, I want to, but I also don't want to waste 20 stroke 45 minutes of my life again redoing the episode. So I'm not going to. Uh, and I don't want to be a guy that goes, Ah, oh, abstract art! Oh, I don't want to touch it. You know, I, I'm playing this so I can play weird things. And I resent that. It's still better <laughs> than, than bloody w w Walden. Which I aggressively didn't like. This I was just disappointed because it broke. Are there muscles in that? There are muscles. Muscles from... H hustles. Let's uh, let's clip back to the end of it. Oh, I'm covering up the uh, Simon thing. I didn't even notice that. I'm kind of missing a trick here. You know what? I never get anyone cares about the Simon thing. I don't know. Let's clip back, shall we? Right, so that was Fugue in Void. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this screen because I think... Oh, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the the company Mosh Link. Uh, small experimental indie games. Most of them focus heavy on neo brutalist architecture and other more modern art. I like to explore philosophical ideas in concrete ways. This concrete ways. I like that. Uh, this is potentially useful in the game itself. But yeah, there's a running theme between them. Click on that. Because uh, some of this looks kind of, kind of interesting. As pictures. But yeah, uh, this game ha has no has no purpose. It's that It says on purpose, but uh, no purpose, no saving system. Experience should be done in one walkthrough and takes about 45 minutes. Take your time. Close the curtains and use the headphones. I did. Perfect break from all those action-packed games out there. I tried... Uh, I'm sorry it broke. But then again, all the other games I play on the list, I don't play all of either. So maybe that's fair. Uh, that was Fugue in Void. What's our next game? Right. Our next game is Hack. It says there, Hack. That's how you pronounce it. Fight cute monsters. Avoid death. Save the game. So, a glitch fantasy roguelike adventure about cute monsters. Uh, low bit hauntings and suspiciously talkative narrator. Choose your character and battle through forests, deserts, and dungeons to defeat mysterious evil. Die often. Try again. There we go. That's all I'll read. But yes, looks like it's pretending to be lower bit than it actually is. If that makes any sense. That's our next game. Back. I'll see you next time. Oh, I'll, I'm, I'll, I guess I'll clip back to the game, which I minimised. Right, so that was Fugue in Void. Probably deserves another chance. Uh, it's a shame that I uh, managed to break it. But uh, I'm going to let you go. I've been John Proxy. This has been in Void. Fugue in Void. Thank you for watching. See you next time.